a tough day at the office with Cork as they lose an All Ireland final, and you know the 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 famine years go back to two thousand and and five at this stage. It's obviously a rough one for them here, losing by sixteen points. Final score three twenty two to Limerick, three thirty two to Limerick, one twenty two to Cork, and it really was. You know, from start to finish, as comprehensive as that scoreline suggests. But just to do the player rates for Cork, and look, they're obviously it was a rough day at the office, so obviously they're not going to be too many eights and nines out of ten, and certainly no ten out of ten here. But uh, you know, unfortunately, it's high stakes stuff, and there's days that go against you. And just a reminder uh, to anyone: if you do uh, watch a lot on YouTube, do click the button in the bottom corner just there to follow the channel. It really does help the channel grow. And uh, consider following on Patreon, join the supporters club a fiver a month, and it's patreon.com forward slash our game. So that really would help out the channel. But uh, just to go through the different uh, aspects of the performance, Patrick Collins and goals. You know, I, I don't think he could do too much about the goals. He made one brilliant save there in the second half. Um, a fantastic save from Tom Morrissey in the 45th minute. Obviously, the game was completely gone at that stage. That was It was 322 to 113 at that stage. There was no coming back. You're 15 points behind. But still in all, you need great saves to be made at times. And that was a really good one. And I, he didn't make too many spills in the game. Obviously, one or two nervy moments. But would you blame him for any of the goals? The Grode Hegarty won at the start. No, you couldn't blame him for that. Aaron Galan won, not a chance. And the other Hegarty won also. You couldn't you couldn't blame him for that. Now, the puck outs, they didn't all go his way. And it's, you know... Limerick set up zonally on a lot of these puck outs, so it's, it's not as if he has huge areas of space to hit the ball into. And I think it's a really tall order. He went short, knowing that he would get the ball back to him and he'd, try and have to, he'd have to try and work it out. Now, once or twice it broke down, and I think maybe once or twice he spilled the ball a little bit, but I'm not going to blame him too harsh for that. So didn't let in any, any clangers of goals or anything like that. Made one brilliant save and did a lot, not you know, pretty well. So I'd give him a 7 out of 10. Niall O'Leary, he did score a point, but he was marking Peter Casey, and Peter Casey scored five points early on in that game. So it was a tough day at the office for Niall O'Leary. He's not the only one, but it'd be hard to give more than a five. Even though he's, you know, he's been in great form, and he's, I think that's three games in a row here in this championship going through the back door that he's scored from play. So um, he's had a pretty good season, but maybe a five. I think Robert Downey had an unbelievably tough task with the ball going in, as did Niall O'Leary. So Niall O'Leary's five, some of that is on the players at the other end of the field who will also be getting fives here. But Robert Downey uh, up against Seamus Flanagan and the ball going into Flanagan was absolutely glorious. So it was incredibly difficult for the Glen Rovers man or anyone else back there. He did win a couple of balls against the head. A couple of times he snaffled on spills from Flanagan and won a bit of decent ball. So you could see that he was tired eventually of trying to chase his man out into the acres of space and the beautiful ball going in front of Flanagan. Um, so I'd be reluctant to give him any less than uh, a six, but I wouldn't be giving a whole pile more either. So get your comments in and let me know if you think that um, that, that any of these players deserved any more. I think Sean, Sean, Sean O'Donoghue had a very tough time against Darren Galan. He cleaned uh, cleaned the Patrick's well man off in the Munster semi-final. I don't think there's any doubt about that, but he was facing a different Galan today. Uh, I couldn't give Donoghue more than a, a five, really. And the reason being is that for that second goal that was scored by Galan, <clears throat> it seemed like uh, Robert Downey was on Seamus Flanagan and Donahue came over to pick up Flanagan, which left Galan in, on his own. And then it was just a simple ball across for Flanagan. And to, to my, for my money, maybe when I watch it back, I'll, I'll think differently. Just Donahue made the wrong decision. And it, it was just very costly because the goal at that stage, that was always going to you know, really dent uh, Cork at that stage. It made it... 2-5 to 1-4, to you know, Cork were right there in it. And it was just such a massive blow. And Cork were going to have to score more goals to win this All-Ireland. Um, then looking at Tim O'Mahony, um, very quiet, I think, compared with other games. Won a couple of balls, had that row with Keane Lynch in the corner. Probably, again, maybe something like a five because, you know, you needed Mahoney being in the game. You needed him getting on ball, turning, beating a man, linking up with the midfield and the half-forward line. Didn't happen. Mark Coleman scored a free, wasn't really his game. Five and own Cadigan a five as well. I think Owen, the reason that I give Cadigan a, a five only is because the, the few times that he got the ball, he generally ended up on the ground, either just being tackled and bottled up, giving it away once or twice. So I, I just think from that point of view, now again, like the rest of the backs, he was absolutely thrown to the wolves, but just uh, giving away the ball when you know when you're in possession and you're you have an opportunity to get rid of it to get turned over even one stage I think Fergal Horgan just told him to get up when he uh, when he ducked, dipped down into a tackle and maybe it should have been a free but anyway uh, that was given against him I think Dara Fitzgibbon was very disappointed in the five uh, Luke Mead uh, he was a little bit better I'd give him 
he scored a point. I'd give him a six version out of seven, but it's hard to give too much to, to Cork players when they've beaten so comprehensively. Conor Cahalan, probably a five, didn't really get into the game, came off at halftime. Seamus Harney scored four points from play. I think that was very good. Uh, that was very good overall, considering how badly his team were beaten. Sort of players stepped up. I mean, he had to go off. I think after about 40 minutes, maybe 45 minutes in the Munster semi-final, he was very good that day and that hurt Cork's chances. Uh, so I'm going to give him an eight. Robbie O'Flynn, he turned, went at Cork or Limerick, tried his hardest, but it just didn't happen for him. So I think a five also. Jack O'Connor scored a point, didn't really get enough ball in space. Like Limerick sit back so well, they're very good at doing that. So a five for him. Uh, Patrick Horgan, he scored a mound of frees and a couple from play, and one of them was a beautiful one here from the Hogan. He was arcing away, just a beautiful strike up over the, up over uh, any would-be tackler. So I'd give Horgan a seven, but you know, very difficult day. They're just under so much pressure in terms of like if you try and win a ball in there, very difficult because Limerick swarm back at you so quickly, and a few times it's just. 50-50 ball hit in, which is really 60-40 most days, but probably 80-20 against this Limerick defence, considering they're so competitive. I mean, they're very good on the ground, but Limerick will eat you up if you hit 50-50 high ball in. And then Shane Kingston, he scored a goal early on in the game, but um, it just wasn't really in it other than that. So probably a, a, a six just by virtue of getting a goal, but really probably closer to a five. And then some of the subs that came in, Niall Cashman did okay, probably a six. Uh, Sean O'Leary Hayes, something similar alan cadding got a point and he caused a little bit of a threat i mean you were hoping he'd get in there and somehow work a goal situation but uh, probably a seven for him barrett i'd give him a seven also uh declan dalton probably just a five it didn't really happen for him also so that's it from uh, from the cork lineup obviously not not exactly most complimentary the ratings out of 10 but uh, you just have to kind of call it too uh might when on second view and maybe i'll kind of change my opinion somewhat but that's kind of my snap um reaction after the game you're you're looking at trying to review not far off uh 35 to 40 players so you're not going to get every one of them right just a couple of comments in here uh garod nighan own cadigan was cork's best defender today big efforts and protected the ball every time martin O'Hearn, a whole lot different playing limerick at their peak absolutely true and most of the experts were right yep and uh i had predicted cork so uh possibly that's a little boot at me but uh you know what well as to take it so enjoy the comments and keep getting them in and uh i'll be uh putting up the link for the hurling show monday morning's hurling show pretty soon so please do get your comments in and we'll talk about uh whatever it is comes up uh, in the morning about limerick's fine win and uh, just a reminder to if you're interested in supporting the channel you can do so on patreon patreon.com forward slash our game uh that would be brilliant if you did consider uh following the show there just one final comment coming in um sharp to you one the adapt they had adapted the kilkenny swarm tactics with fierce physicality and more skill than the kilkenny four in a row now there is a talking point let me know what you think